And now, broadcasting live from the darkroom studio at Craven Community College, it's In the Know. Hey, everybody, and welcome to In the Know. Woo woo! Yeah, we're excited. <laughs> uh, I'm Craig Ramey. I am one of your hosts here for our podcast we do from Craven Community College's studio, uh, the Darkroom Studio, located uh, right here next to our friends over at Public Radio East. Uh, but we've got a, a podcast we do here where we just try to have fun, talk about some things, maybe learn a few things. Uh, but I don't do this show by myself. Not at all. I'm joined by people who are laughing to my right. Uh, le let's let them introduce themselves. To my right, I have... Good morning, Megan Johnson. I am glad to be back. Today is July 20th. I don't know if you said that already. I didn't yeah. because I knew I'd get the date wrong. I, I trust you to tell yes, me what the date is. Today is July 20th, Wednesday at noon, which always reminds me. The one on my right likes to remember, <laughs> never forget lunch. Yes, it. Hello, everyone. Wendy White. Happy lunch. Happy whatever time it is that you're watching us, whether it's live or the um, replay. So we're glad to have you here today joining us. Um, I have to be honest. I don't know who's coming on today. Yeah. I'm excited. So it's going to be a surprise <laughs> for me, too. We got Smell lots of surprises. Crazy. We do. We do. I do want to give a shout out right now that we have um, in the library currently. We have the North Carolina Community College Library Directors Institute happening right now. Awesome. So it's great to be able to connect with uh, fellow library directors. There, uh, We have about 20... 324 actually here. Did you say so these are from great. community colleges? Yes, yeah, so okay, all across the state of North Carolina. And then we have about 20 or so virtually. So out of the 58 colleges, we have about 51 representations right now from, from all across the state of North Carolina. So we want to welcome them. We're glad to have them here today. Uh, they're upstairs right now eating lunch. And so I uh, hope they're enjoying it yeah yeah are you, you're yeah. are you missing lunch to join us i well i usually miss lunch yeah that's to join true. us yeah. so nothing new for me but yeah. um but yeah fun time so i'll throw it to the booth so they can uh say who's here today hello oh but you got us Ooh, instead of the yeah. booth my name is holly and i'm the phantom of the booth today ah perfect that's right no no camera in the no booth today the yeah booth that's today. right oh, okay. yeah because we got a lot going on we ran out of cameras yeah. That's a good problem. Yeah, right? it is. Yeah. Right? We're busy. Right. We're, we're <laughs> take well, as long as we have the good angle. <laughs> take my camera. It's fine. <laughs> Can I uh, be the ghost of the show? And uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, help Wendy out with the heads up on who our guest is today because it's pretty exciting. We've yes. got uh, Don Carpinetti with us, who is our, he's one of our chemistry faculty, but he's also a NASA solar system ambassador. And he's going to be talking to us a little bit today about. Uh, all things space, specifically uh, nice. some of the uh, exciting new images that have come out recently from cool. the James Webb Observatory. But he looks at me and says, space. Yeah. Space. Am I spacey? I wasn't looking at you. I was looking at the space between your ears. Oh, I know. Yeah, spacey. <laughs> I'm spacey. So, um, speaking of surprises also, you got something in a covered dish over here, Craig. I do. You want some food? I never bring food. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, but today I did. Okay, you, you brought the food today. I did. He did. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. Oh. Don't give me too much credit. I, okay. I, he did text me though, and he says, "Do you have any paper plates or bowls?" <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, "Yeah," and I'll bring napkins and paper towels too. Yes. I was I was trying uh, with the uh, the forks and and napkins and stuff. I I didn't do a good job really here, and Holly was helping me rummage through some things. So we found some. Uh, <laughs> Should I bring it over? Yeah, yeah, bring it on over. Yeah. So July. I guess it's not hot. It's cold. It is. Yep. That's right. Okay. So July is National Blueberry Month. Yay! <gasps> so it's a cobbler. Wow. Uh, yes, it is a cobbler. Give me a fork, girl. Got it. Are you? She just wants the dish. Give her so, a fork. Just dig out of the dish. Do, do you want to serve it while I explain why I have this and how this is here? Yeah. Or you want me to yeah. serve oh, it up for you? I can. Give yeah, me a fork. Open your fork. fork. Yeah, yes, okay. got it. So yes, yeah, so July is uh, National Blueberry Month. Uh, here, did I, you see this? I didn't. Yeah. Ooh, there you go. Mm. It matches your shirt. Homemade. Yeah. It is homemade. I love uh, it. So uh, at my house, we have some blueberry bushes in the backyard. Mm -hmm. And every year, uh, it gives us more and more. It just keep, keeps getting stronger and stronger. And uh, we sometimes have more blueberries than we even know what to do with. We freeze them, put them in smoothies and desserts awesome. and all yeah. kinds of stuff. That's good. huge. But yes. Um, but it's yes. Lunch, <laughs> so um, I didn't make this, but Jess did. Mm -hmm. uh, sh and yesterday she said, it's just super easy. Just put it together. It'll be fine. And I was like, you know, don't worry about it. I'll try to Toss make some it. time for it. But no, she wasn't having that. She got the blueberries and I, I guess, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I guess cobblers are very easy to make. It's just, Megan, you probably know Fruit, this. Fruit, sugar, flour, butter. 
Yeah, I think Done. that's it. Yeah, Throw all it the there. good stuff, right? Our guest wants a little slice too. It's yes. coming. Okay. So yeah, we'll spread okay. this around. Actually, do you want to pass this one over oh, no, to uh, short. Okay. Short. To Don while he's waiting, and then here you go. Here's yours. Uh, in the booth, we got Holly and Eli. Do y'all want to come and get some of this blueberry? Eli, can I make you two? Pl- and Christina? Make you two plates. Yeah, they might come and get some too. Yes? Okay, so here yep. we go. Let me wait for you to. We'll, yeah, let's we'll do wait. a one, two, three. Okay, okay, we're gonna oh, wait. One, two, three. Hold yeah. On. All one, right. Two, sorry, three. Eli and Holly are sitting there like <laughs> little puppies. <laughs> <laughs> here, you can go ahead and take this one too, and then I'll get uh, one more. Where's Christina? Where, is she she's still in there. In there too. Yeah. Does she want one? I would assume. I was a sigh, so that was like, yes. Yeah. Okay. I will. There I you must. Go. Okay. One more. Yep. Yeah. So, um, two more. One for you. One. Yeah. One for me. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so we've got so spices. many blueberries at the house. I'm it's going to be gone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, that's what okay. You, that's what you yeah. make it for, right? You make it for it till yeah. it's all gone. So I'm that's excited. what we say. This is early lunch, right? <laughs> early yeah. lunch. Early. Oh, another or it's fork. just lunch. Another I guess. We need forks. But yeah. Well, there was a, a spork. I'll take a spoon or a spork. Yeah. I want the spork for sure. Got it. Sporks always make me think of KFC. I don't know about you. Mm, Probably yes, not. Just potatoes. me. Yeah. Bojangles. That was the first time I ever saw a spork was at KFC. Bojangles for me. Yeah. My favorite sporks um, are the ones that Danny Batten sells down at uh, mm-hmm. Surf, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. And they have a little knife, a fork, and um, a spoon all at the same time. Kind of cool. The get a fork has that? a little knife on it. Look Done. at that. Look, empty <laughs> pan. That's Look the way we match, like too. It. We got yeah. their blues going on. Like, is, is that part of some of their camping stuff? Is that yes. What it, yeah, they've got some of the best camping stuff. I actually... Recently got a backpack from his shop. Uh, it was one I okay. used on my, my most recent trip. Sorry. We, okay. Uh, that's right. We use them in when I would pack lunches for the kids and myself. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So cool. instead of throwing away plastic. All right. Ready? Okay. Yep. Uh-huh. One, two, three. Ah. That's good. Mm-hmm. That was mm. really good. It does good. Great job. Yep. Very good. Thank you, Jess. Yes. Thank you so much. And, yep, uh, she gets all the credit. Thank you for yes. the sunshine well, and all the. Thank you for nice teaching re- Craig how to do this. Right. Nice yeah, rain. Well, no, he. I mean, he. She made she, it. Fenton picked the blueberries. She made the cobbler. I brought it here and rummaged for things to serve <laughs> it with, and eventually had to get help from Megan. Well, you know, and you know, I, I was going to have plates in my office. <laughs> and, and the funny thing is, like, I just wish I had time to go home. I would have brought crystal. You know, that would have been. She a would have. She brought the yeah. whole china set. <laughs> Maybe yeah. next time. Maybe yeah. when it's National yes. China. Mom. China Day. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. Yeah. Well, speaking of food, you More? know what else today is? I got to pull it out. No, you got a There's list. There's a couple, yeah. actually. Yeah. There's a couple food things today. So I appreciate you bringing the blueberries for National Blueberry it's Month. It's delicious. So do you guys know, I'm sure you know this name. Where did I put them? Boop, 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 boop. Uh, for anybody who is watching us on uh, Facebook right now, if you want to, if you have any questions that you want to put in the oh, comments for us, or if you have any delicious blueberry recipes or things you well, like to do fun. with blueberries, let us know. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Joey Chestnut, do you know who that is? Mm. Oh yes, he was on the news lately. Yes, he's the hot dog eating contest guy, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Didn't, didn't he get attacked by somebody during the contest as well? Uh, I kind of heard some rumblings about yes, that. Yes, there was somebody wearing a Darth Vader mask who attacked him. <laughs> While on, he was eating hot dogs? Nathan's, yes. Nathan's dogs, right? Nathan's hot dogs, yeah. Why did he attack him? To, um, I don't know exactly? all of it. it was something about um, Oh, workers. here it is. I is found it. Is it in there? Yeah, it says, yeah. Um, not only did Joey Chestnut devour 63 hot dogs, he took down a protester <laughs> while the competitive eating legend was in the midst of winning the 2022 Nash- Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest on the 15th time, um, 15th time on Sunday in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Protesters rushed the stage July 4th. Yep. What were they protesting? I believe it was working conditions at a specific farm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I didn't that realize makes hot this. Dogs. Yeah, so Smithfield, which is yeah, a huge, uh, well, I, has, yeah, Smithfield yes. was the company. Yes, and you know they are a big company here in North Carolina. But mm-hmm. I didn't realize that Nathan's was made by Smithfield. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know all the specifics of it. Not getting but, the politics of it. Yeah, I'm well, just I mean, saying, I, but that's, I would assume that Smithfield's raises the pigs, and Nathan's does whatever they do to make them taste like Nathan's hot dogs. Correct. Right? And I That'd believe be my guess. Nathan's hot dogs are also kosher too. That I don't know. Yeah. What I do know is that they, when they're in the eating contest, they 
like deconstruct the hot dog, mm-hmm. right? And they dip the bun in lemonade or water. You mm-hmm. get to choose whatever you want your liquid to be. Mm-hmm. And Joey Chestnut's I'm not sure style. I need another bite of blueberry mm-hmm. if you keep talking. Oh, like sorry, that. I'll stop. Well, okay. <laughs> so I, I wrote a column about this. Did so you years really? I did. You I, did? I, I, uh, the only I, I'll toot my own horn for just one second. The only national first place award I ever won for writing was a column I wrote while I was working at the News Times about. A hot dog eating contest on the 4th of July. Wow. wow. Well, congratulations. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I learned a lot about the hot dog eating mm. contest and culture. And Did you gag thinking about it? Uh, I mean, at times? Not really, but he watching it. He consumed 63. It's ridiculous. And the it, bun. He, his, and yeah, you have to eat the bun too. In 2018, he won also, and he ate 74 in 10 minutes. Mm, How do, mm, I mean, mm. I don't even think I could eat 17 or 74 blueberries in 10 minutes, <laughs> much less hot dogs and buns. Mm-hmm. Okay, so do you understand that he his mm. job is a... Oh, I don't know what his job is. <laughs> He's a competitive eater. That's a job? That's a job. That's a job. It's a job. So his, what is the his pay full scale name? It's, Joseph, not, it's <laughs> a job, but it's not a career. <laughs> it's It says his full name, Joseph Christian Chestnut, born in 83, is an American competitive eater. He's currently ranked first in the world in major league eating. Major league. <laughs> He's a California native and resides in Westfield, Indiana. So... We didn't need to know all Wait, the information, but I just did, think it's interesting. Yeah, how did he come up in the first place? What is the significance of Joey Chestnut and today? Yes. Yeah. Didn't get, yo, I don't think, think we said Take that part. Take a guess. Part. Take a guess. It's Take National guess. Hot Dog Day. Today is National Hot Dog Day. Oh, mm. I thought yes. it was the fourth. Okay, cool. National Hot Dog. Well, celebrate. Well, so the whole month is also National Hot Dog Month this okay. July. Okay, gotcha. But, this, this, um, but we celebrate the day on the 20th. Now, um, you mentioned... When you were writing for that thing, you were also a sports writer, correct? I was a sports, yeah, that's the only reason I was able to get away with it. Okay. That's because it was so technically a sports column. The, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so speaking of which, how many um, millions of hot dogs are, just a random guess, are sold at baseball stadiums alone each year? Two. How many millions? 6.6. <laughs> 25. Wow. 25 hot, 20 25 million million hot dogs? Million Always hot off dogs. on those guesses. Yes. 25 million. Yep. Are sold in baseball stadiums each year. And there was another stat I thought in here that was really kind of interesting. Who oh, do that's, you... that's got to include like high schools and middle schools too, right? Yeah, like uh, all. Because they're, they're slinging all kinds of hot dogs at those games because they're cheap know. and yeah. fundraisers. Right? So which, who do you that's think, a lot of hot dogs. Who do you think sells the most hot dogs? Each Oscar year. Mayer. I mean, like, what company? Oh, is that um, not a company? Like, <laughs> it's just already, a guy. Already, <laughs> There's a guy I know named I Oscar never Mayer get who lives these in guesses, Oklahoma. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get me frazzled. <laughs> um, oh, what? Frazzling. What Maybe. company? And I'll narrow it down. <laughs> what um, gas station? Gas station. They're now making hot dogs. <laughs> not making Enjoy a them. gas station hot dog <laughs> made by gas station. <laughs> Plump, <laughs> juicy. <laughs> I'm kidding. You're not letting me think. Get gas. Get hot dogs. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Now you're, you've got me all I'm sorry. Frazzled. You really do. All right. What gas station sells the most hot dogs? Is that Convenience your question? Convenience Mart. Okay. 7-Eleven? It is. How okay. many millions do you think they oh. sell? That, another millions question. Another millions. You said 20-something before, right? More than a baseball 25. stadium or less? Yeah. Is it more than a baseball stadium or less? Less. Remember, this is one chain. I'm going to stick to my two. <laughs> <laughs> 1.9. Okay. All right. Seven million. And you, I'm just wow. remembering that. Now I can't even find it on here. As a vegetarian, do you want to hear my uh, 7-Eleven hot dog story? Ooh. It's I not gross. Gag? No, no, not at all. Did you have one? Okay. Did you eat one? Yeah. Well, no. Uh, <laughs> this was while I was living in Oregon. Uh, didn't really have a whole lot of money. Wasn't uh, you know? It was right after I graduated from college, uh, before I'd really started working. Uh, here it is. So... I was wrong. Not 7-Eleven sold a hundred million annually. So four times what the four times what stadiums sell. I believe it. They're cheap. Hundred million. Wow. Yes, I didn't make it up, but I did say it incorrectly. Mm. What do they call that? We're, we're supposed like to be giving check. people actu- <laughs> accurate information here. <laughs> I was wrong. Yeah. And now I've corrected. You have. That, yes. That's really Sorry, important. Sorry, 7-Eleven. We've, we've done it in real time. Million, you're top of your industry. You're the best. Way to go. You're the best, 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> and on those little rollers. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> Who 
Speed okay. on, dog, off, roll, exactly. Roll, 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 roll. So I, I didn't have <laughs> a whole lot of money. I couldn't, I couldn't afford a whole it. lot of food, and I went into a Seven <laughs> Eleven. It was like ten thirty at night, and I went over and I got two buns and I filled them with condiments. Okay. <laughs> okay. And okay. Oops, I, which I was fine with. I was okay just okay. eating the the, the mustard bread. and the bread and the the um, the pickles and and all that stuff. Slaw. And then I took it over to buy it. And she said, you can't buy that. Yeah, you probably like freaked her out. I said, why not? She said, you didn't put any dogs on it. I said, well, I don't want the dogs. I'll, I'll still pay the price. You just want the pickles the, and the of, onions of the and slaw dog dogs. And I just that. don't want the dogs. She's like, but then I'll have an uneven number of dogs <laughs> and buns. And you can't do that. And I was like, well, I don't want it. <laughs> so she would not let me buy it. I had to just what? like leave the buns Why didn't there. you just, just bike it up? Just well, it was, at that point, it was on principle. We both were having a principle uh, yeah. battle. I just you? gone and got it and threw it in the trash. Here, like Do done. You, he, he held his ground over <laughs> an <laughs> empty dog. <laughs> over <all> yeah. dog. <laughs> yeah. They can sit over there okay. on the rollers and cook and roast. I'm not going to eat them. Mm. Yeah, I'm okay. not going to eat it. No. Okay. So hot Fine. dog, a hot dog is considered a sausage, but a sausage isn't necessarily a hot dog. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, you can play your little mental gymnastics okay. with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put that. You ready for this one? A hot dog without meat or poultry cannot be called a hot dog. Well, um, it was bread with condiments. Let me think. <laughs> what? Wait, you're, you're seriously hurting my brain. I, I need a, I need a, a diagram hot, or a something. A hot dog. Well, I mean, it could be like veggie. You know, like my daughter eats that Beyond Burger mm-hmm. stuff. Well, they make a like a sausage dog. They do. I don't like it. It smells. Oh, it smells. Yeah. <laughs> She likes them. So is it a hot dog or not? No. Because it doesn't have beef or poultry. Correct. It's not considered a hot dog. Does a hot dog really have beef? Yeah, what's in there? I don't know. We don't want to know. I don't want to know. A standard beef hot dog has 190 calories, offers 7 grams of protein, 30% of your daily value of B12, a crucial nutrient for normal (laughs) metabolism, brain development, children, and Uh, mental clarification for adults. I am not recommending that you eat a hot dog diet, just so you know. No. Um... And one of the things, this goes back to your 7-Eleven story, a hot dog is not a sandwich. Because the bun's connected, right? I the bun know. opens up. So if you're... I don't know if there's a distinction. All right. So what if you put a hot dog but, so on a, a piece of So a sub is not a sandwich? I guess. Oh. Yeah. So by that logic, you're, again, clearly my <laughs> mind is too weak to battle with the two of you today. <laughs> be this, why was it not called like a sausage sandwich? It might okay. be a sausage sandwich. So mm-hmm. to celebrate, yes, you don't say hot dog sandwich, so, but you do say sub sandwich. You yeah. do. So do does, you ever say hamburger sandwich? No, hamburger sandwich. So is hamburger a sandwich? What if you put a hot dog on your hamburger sandwich? What is it then? <laughs> Big. <This is> Gross. <laughs> Unedible. There's, prob- there's probably a name for Unedible. A, a hamburger with a hot dog on it. I'm sure there is. We'll figure it out later. Ham dog. The ham dog. Okay, <laughs> ham fair dog. enough. Okay. So done. When We're, this is a this is turning into one of the most educational <laughs> podcasts we've ever done. I'm not so, gonna lie. Um, <laughs> really though. <laughs> okay. All right. Do you want to know this one? The world's longest hot dog ever. The world's longest, longest. hot dog. You want to take a guess? Um, I'm terrible. A hundred million <laughs> miles. <laughs> Yes, I'm going to say no. two. <laughs> All right, let's just say this. How many football fields? Oh, um, two. Two. Oh, ah, look at yes. that. It all comes together. Six, I win, finally. Like yes. 668 feet of hot dog. <laughs> That's a lot. That's, That's a lot of hot dog. Too much. Too much. No. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, um, Mickey Mouse's first words on screen were? Hot dog. Hot dog. Oh, okay. Who knew? I was excited. So this is kind of He wasn't crazy. eating a hot dog. He was like, hot dog. <laughs> that was good. That was, that was very good. good. Thank you. Thank it's you. Really that good. was very good. Uh, President Franklin D. Roosevelt actually served hot dogs to King George and Queen Elizabeth. And the king ate how many? Two. Two. <laughs> I knew I was going to get right. that number right. So from, from this point forward, the, wor- the number of the day is two. 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 Yeah. So every time you hear two, you have to... Scream and put the camera on Wendy. Okay. So, <laughs> the prime, I don't. I'm fine with that. The <laughs> prime spot outside of New York Central Park Zoo is um, the hot dog vendor. And guess what he makes a year? Selling hot dogs. Two oh. million. <laughs> <laughs> 300,000. 
So anyway, like I'm sure three hundred thousand a year. A year. Hot I got two more things to ask you about hot dogs, and then I'll move on. Okay. Yeah, because we, we've had, taken up a lot of time yeah, on hot dogs, <laughs> <laughs> hot dogs and blueberries. Yeah, we, sh- we have a guest. We should probably move on to. All right, tell me All your right. two other hot dog things. Two other things. It'll so if quiet. you were supposed to have a celebrity to eat a hot dog with, who would you want to eat with? Any celebrity. Mm. Any celebrity any? to eat a hot dog with? Mm-hmm. I'm not a celebrity person, so. Okay, well, I'll just tell you. So when they... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll tell you who you want it with. No, okay. the, when surveyed, most Americans said that they wanted to have a hot dog with Betty White. So Aww. when Betty White was on Rest the set soul. of um, her show in uh, Hot in Cleveland. Uh-huh. Hot, not hot in Cleveland. Hot in Cleveland. Hot in Cleveland, I think is <laughs> what Cleveland, said. that's what I said first. She ate a hot dog every day on the set. Oh. And wow. still got to live to 97. Did, so wait, did saying, she eat a hot dog on the show? I, I remember seeing her eat hot dogs on the show, but she okay. said she ate it on the set every day. Every a hot dog. day. Well, now, it, I've seen gifts of you, Betty White eating a hot dog. I guess it's from that show. That's where okay. that makes sense now. So, um, in addition to like the Beyond Meat, they also have like regular size, like I think it's called Smart Life because I've bought them recently. Mm-hmm. The last yes. time we went to Ocracoke yeah. and we cooked hot dogs for the family, mm-hmm. not what the cardiologist recommends, FYI. Um, but mm-hmm. it was a special treat. Um, how do you like yours cooked? Those specifically, mm-hmm. the, the Vegetarian Smart Life, I will get a cast iron skillet and I'll put a little bit of either like spray olive oil or a little bit of butter and put them on there. They stick terribly. If they you put do. them on the grill, it's over. They don't smell as bad as the other ones do. No, but you can't put them, if you put them on an open flame, you better have a way to get them. Like they got to have so much oil on them so they don't stick. So that's how I do it. It's the, just the easiest. Do you put them on buns? Yeah. What do you put on top of them? Uh, I like spicy mustard and relish and coleslaw. Those are my favorite things to put on a dog. Gotcha. Sauerkraut sometimes, depending if it's got a more of a sausage. Well, it is slant. considered a sausage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But a sausage is always at a hot dog. How do you like yours? I don't I eat hot dogs. I can't. Not at all. Not at all. Even as a kid, you didn't? Um, very rarely. And then, uh, I don't know, about the time my daughter was born, you go to birthday parties and they always serve mm-hmm. hot dogs and... I just remember eating my last one. I was like, oh, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. And so I have not had one. Well, my daughter's <clears throat> 21 now, so I haven't had one in, mm-hmm. gosh, 18, 19 years. That's that's really knowing yourself, though, when you've mm-hmm. s- put down your last hot dog mm-hmm. and you're done. like, that's it. That's it. Done. done. <laughs> yeah. Done. It just makes me feel gross. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. been a couple of years for me. I couldn't tell you the last I time I could definitely go several years in between without have, having one. I mm-hmm. mean, I don't crave them. I don't ask for them. It's not one of my things. Um, but... If I do. At a baseball game? No, actually, I like them off the grill, and I like them extra charred. Mm. And then I put them on a bun with mustard and onions. So what does that say? I have to char it, and I have to cover it with something spicy and salty and oniony. <laughs> yeah. So I'm covering up the flavor. Right. Yeah. Basically. The best part's the condiments. Right. And, the tri- and the texture, because that's a thing for me, too. I don't really like the texture. Yeah. Uh, so if you are watching and you have a favorite condiment or a favorite way to make a hot dog, let us know. But we've probably spent so much time on hot dogs that you don't want to do that. Uh, 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 we do have we a comment. I'd still love to know. Uh, but go ahead. We do have a comment from Phyllis Toller. Anybody uh, know who Phyllis Toller is? My mom. Is it? Okay. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. She's, She's wearing her face on her face. <laughs> she says, did all of you take a giggle pill before the show today? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah, yes, so. Mom. I did. So do you have anything else you need to cover before we introduce our first guest? Because um, I want to make sure we give him enough time to talk about well, what Well, some of got. it we'll talk about then. It's also National Fortune Cookie Day. So go pop a fortune cookie, a little of those little crispy nuggets at the end of your Chinese takeout. Okay. And it's also your favorite candy on a stick. Candy on a stick. National Lollipop Day. Oh. Mm. Okay. I do want to ask you before that and maybe well you know what i'll do this with our host yeah i mean with our, our guest, guest at the yeah, end yeah. um some little pop cr- um trivia okay that sound sounds good, good. yeah all right so uh, some of you may know we usually try and have uh, a guest come on the show to talk to us about a specific topic that they're interested in or something they know a lot about that we're going to learn a little bit from them and we call those tbd talks today our guest on the show is don carpinetti who is a chemistry faculty here at craven community college and he is also a nasa solar system ambassador so he's going to talk to us a little bit about some of the images you may have seen coming out recently uh, but i won't give away too much i'll let him uh, explain all that to us so without further further 
Yeah. Without too. Frank Furter ado. Uh, <laughs> Way to tie I, in hot dogs yeah, Exactly. <laughs> two. Uh, it's time for a TBD talk. Hot dog. Space Telescope launched in on Christmas Day, 2021, uh, flew to L2 Lagrange point. Talk about that in the questions, maybe what that means. Um, and has been preparing to take some uh, measurements and observations since then. The first pictures from the uh, telescope came in last week. One was released on Monday, um, and then four more on. Wednesday, and they've been kind of dribbling out since then. I want to talk today about those first images that were released. Uh, the first picture that came out last Monday is what's called a deep field shot. So to get an idea of what we're seeing here, if you uh, imagine you're holding a grain of sand in your between your finger and your thumb, and you hold your arm out as far as you can in front of your face, and you look up at the sky, the amount of the sky covered by that grain of sand is the area that we see in this picture. So the telescope was, was focused on what looked like an empty area of space, collected uh, the light that was coming in for 12 and a half hours. So if you're familiar at all with the Hubble Space Telescope um, and similar pictures, most Hubble pictures like this took 21 days. So this is collecting information about 40 times faster than than the Hubble Space Telescope was. Right at the center of this picture is a galaxy cluster. So uh, anything you see in the picture that has spikes coming off of it is a star. Um, those stars would be in our local Milky Way galaxy. Everything else that we see is another galaxy outside of the Milky Way. So right at the center of the picture, you see some white blobs. That is a galaxy cluster. Um, and that was primarily chosen as the as the object to be analyzed in this picture because of a concept called gravitational lensing. So if light passes by an object that has a lot of mass and therefore a lot of gravity, that light can actually bend, can be bent the same way a magnifying glass bends light and can magnify what you're looking at through the magnifying glass. So around the kind of center of the picture, any of this kind of smeared images that you see the light from those galaxies is being magnified by the fact that it is passing by this galaxy cluster um, on the way to where we're seeing that light. Uh, this helps scientists to see objects that are even further away with higher resolution if they can kind of line up a galaxy and start to look at the things around it that are further away um, behind it. Um, so three other light there besides the stars that I mentioned is a galaxy. And maybe the most interesting thing in this picture are some of the tiny, tiny specks that you can just barely see there is a speck there. The smaller the objects here, generally the older um, that galaxy, so the light is traveling further to reach us before it gets uh, collected by James Webb Space Telescope. So some of the tiniest dots in this picture are around 13 billion years old um, and were formed within the first two uh, billion years of, of the galaxy. Um, in fact, this morning I just saw a new release from James Webb of a galaxy that is estimated to be only 300 million years old, so about 14, more than 14 billion years old, the oldest galaxy that has ever been detected so far. So science is coming out fast um, and furious um, from the telescope now that it's up and running. Now, the second picture here, maybe not as impressive um, artistically, but from a scientific perspective, I think this is even more exciting than the first picture. What we're seeing here is um, a spectrum. And this is a spectrum of the atmosphere of an exoplanet. So uh, uh, WASP 96b is a planet um, that is circling a star in uh, the Milky Way that we can look at. So the planet was previously detected, but what we can do now with the James Webb Space Telescope is actually look at the atmosphere of that planet. So the planet um, is larger than Jupiter, uh, and it orbit, 
orbits this star in about three and a half days. So it's known that we could take the James Webb Space Telescope and actually watch this planet move across the front of the star. And as the planet moves in front of the star, it kind of blocks out some of the light from the star. But what, what we're able to do now with the James Webb Space Telescope is actually observe how the light is interacting with the thin layer of atmosphere that is around the, the planet. So the light comes out of the star, it passes through the atmosphere of the planet. Some of that light is going to interact with the molecules that are present in the atmosphere of the planet. And then the light that continues on and eventually is collected by the telescope may be missing certain wavelengths of light that correspond to the molecular composition of that, uh, that planet's atmosphere. So what we're seeing here in the picture is the presence of water vapor in the atmosphere of this planet. And based on some of the different peaks uh, that water makes in terms of different wavelengths of light that it interacts with, um, this picture actually shows us that there are physical clouds on this planet. So we are looking at a planet that is uh, hundreds of light years away, and we're actually able to image the clouds that are, are in the atmosphere. Um, so scientifically, this is, is going to give uh, astronomers a lot of opportunity to look at the properties of planets outside of our solar system and get some information about those planets. Okay, next picture is uh, a planetary nebula, which uh, may be a uh, issue in science is naming things before you really know what is happening. Planetary nebulas turn out to have nothing at all to do with planets. They are the debris that's left over when a star dies. So what we see, the rings around the kind of central stars, you look at the picture on the left, you can see a star in the center. That's actually not the star that is causing the formation of this nebula. But those kind of rings of dust surrounding um, what looks like the star in the center um, are dust that's being thrown off as a star that goes through the last phases of its life cycle and starts to throw the matter out into space uh, around it. Um, this uh, image is, is a good demonstration of the fact that there are, um, how many cameras, uh, Wendy? There are two different cameras on the James Webb Space Telescope. Um, the one on the left side of this picture, you can see down at the bottom, NIR is near infrared. Um, so that's a certain section of infrared light. The one on the right side is MIRI, is mid-infrared. Um, but the mid-infrared light is a lot better at passing through dust that might be in between the object that we're trying to look at and the telescope. So in, in the first image, you see that star in the center, but you don't actually see the star that's dying that is creating this nebula. Because there's a lot of dust there, that's the material being thrown out by, by the dying star. In the mid-infrared, the image on the right side of the screen, in addition to the kind of white spot in the center of the nebula, you see a red spot behind it as well. That's actually the dying star. Because the mid-infrared passes more easily through the dust, we can actually see a lot more information with this particular camera um, on James Webb. And each of these kind of ranges of infrared light that we're looking at are, are areas that we, we don't currently have the ability to look in those types of light um, out at the universe. Existing space telescopes like the Hubble look more at visible light or look at further infrared light. The Spitzer Space Telescope looks at further infrared light. So what this uh, tool is going to allow uh, scientists to do is look at the life cycle of stars. Uh, so we can look out at all of the stars out there, and you can potentially see stars in all different phases of their life cycle. They're being formed, or, or their life cycle is coming to an end, and they're, they're starting to go through the death process and throw all of this uh, material out into space. Um, if we go back to that slide, one thing. Um, and similar to that first picture, um, if you look over to the, uh, the left side of this, each, either of these pictures, but you really can't take a picture with this telescope and not get photobombed by galaxies in the background. So 
just above the center over on the left side, you can see kind of a flat line with maybe a little bump in the middle. That's a galaxy that is behind this nebula. Um, and we're seeing it in both of the pictures um, through the different types of infrared light. So every time we look, there's all kinds of new things to, to learn about um, in the background, or maybe excite scientists to, to take a closer look. Okay, fourth picture here is um, called Stefan's Quintet. Uh, and this is four um, interacting galaxies. Uh, this was discovered in 1877. Uh, we know now that one of these galaxies is actually a lot closer than the other four. So the galaxy off to the left is actually quite a bit closer to us than the four galaxies that are interacting. But similar to what I was saying about stars and how we want to look at their entire life cycle, um, this um, is a good example of galaxies that are starting to interact with each other and are starting to maybe merge together. So the galaxy at the top, you can see, kind of has this long, wispy arm um, coming out of it. That is material from that galaxy being pulled toward one of the galaxies in the middle. Um, and let me ask a trivia question here on this one. This appeared in a movie that I would guess everyone has seen. Does anybody recognize this image? It's not Star Wars. It's not Star Wars. It's not Space Odyssey. It's not Space Odyssey. Apollo 11. Wow. Okay, this this was in It's a Wonderful Life. So when when the angels are talking early in the film, like I think Clarence is getting his uh, directions on what to do, um, the picture of the Stephen's Quintet comes up, and it, the galaxies flash as each angel is talking. Um, so much less resi much high resolution picture, but. You may have seen that before if, if you've seen that movie. Okay, lots, you can also see lots of stars here um, and lots of other galaxies um, in the background. But again, this is, uh, you look out and see all these galaxies, you'll start to see galaxies through their entire life cycle as well. So all the way back to close to the beginning of the universe, we can see young galaxies um, and looking out where galaxies are interacting see how those, those smaller galaxies start to fuse together into bigger galaxies, right? more like some of the closer galaxies that we see today. Okay, and kind of back to star forming. Uh, this is what's called the star forming region in the Carina Nebula. Uh, this is kind of an interstellar cloud of dust, uh, but all of this dust um, will start to interact um, under the force of gravity. So small clusters of dust will kind of stick together, a little more gravity that will pull in more dust. So in a cloud like this, we can see the birth of stars. So one of the previous pictures kind of showed what happens when a star dies. There are some places in this uh, picture where we can start to see what is happening as stars are born. Uh, so there's a couple places uh, within the picture wherever you see kind of a, an orangish smear. Uh, there's one just a little to the right of center, kind of up near what looks like the top of that mountain range, where a star system is starting to form, where the material is starting to be starting to be pulled into a disk, um, which will eventually kind of separate out into a star and its planets. Um, so scientists are going to be able to kind of dig through images like this, find places where stars are in different parts of the process of forming and hopefully give us a lot more information about how that happens um, and um, maybe why um, systems form certain planets or perhaps give us some information that will help us to learn more about our own solar system. Okay, that, that's the end of the new images, at least as of last Tuesday. There have been a couple that have come out since then. Willing to try to answer any questions. She's doing this. There we go. Yeah, so 
<laughs> but look at our gross plate sitting up there. That is yeah, yucky. That doesn't look good. Yeah. Here. So um, <laughs> Don's moving across the studio now. Yeah. It's going to take him a few minutes uh, to, to traverse. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. But uh, every time I see those pictures, I am just, I can't even comprehend nope. the amount of space that mm -hmm. is, that is shown in them. Mm -hmm. And, and like, I, I love that analogy of holding the sand at arm's length up to the sky. Cause that's, like I need that kind of concrete imagery to understand mm -hmm. the size of it, right? And even still, like that's just so so small uh, and pretty and sparkly. It well, of yeah. course, yes, it's it pretty, was and very pretty and sparkly. It, it, I think it's pretty and sparkly from down here. It'd probably be terrorizing to be up there in the middle of all of that mm -hmm. uh, just chaos. I just think it's pretty cool that they've got all these really pretty high def pictures now of places they found back in the 1800s. I mean, that's really kind of very yeah. cool. So, Don, great presentation. Uh, again, thank, thank you. you for being with us today. You might want to push this a little closer so we can hear you. And um, But we're glad you're here at the table with yeah. us. <laughs> <He> dug down. <laughs> so I, have to, I just have to ask, how do you get a shirt that's got NASA's logo on it? Uh, NASA merch store. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So the Solar System Ambassador Program is is voluntary. Oh, um, okay. So I, I don't work for NASA. I don't work for the government. Are you um, a rocket scientist? No, not at all. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but <laughs> I'm interested ask. in science outreach. Okay. So uh, what I get from the program is a badge. Um, but and then you the, buy your own all shirt. All the NASA gear I bought myself. And you yeah. can find it too. If you search NASA merch online, you will find their website. Yeah. So how excited were you when you first saw those pictures come out? Because I know in the scientific community, there's been all this anticipation before they came out. And then NASA kind of held on to them mm -hmm. first. I don't know what they were doing in that period. And then they released them. Tell me. I mean, I'm sure they wanted to see them first to make sure that they photoshopped all the aliens out and all that stuff. Right. <laughs> they held um, on to them. <laughs> yeah. I, I was uh, really impressed with the images as well. I think particularly the second one, I don't know, you mentioned I, I teach chemistry. So mm -hmm. my interest maybe focuses a little more towards what kind of chemistry can we do mm -hmm. in, outside the, in the universe and this where you can use the light that's passing through the atmosphere to analyze all the molecules in the atmosphere of an exoplanet mm -hmm. is, is amazing to me. It's mm -hmm. something we we can do in the lab with a little instrument, but to be able to do that millions, billions of light years away mm -hmm. is just amazing. Mm -hmm. And by comparison, I think if somebody is, if a, an intelligent species is out there looking at the earth, there are, are lots of signature molecules that would give away the fact that there are intelligent beings on the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, fluorine, for instance, only exists naturally as fluoride anion but we've put it in things like chlorofluorocarbons and Teflon. And if somebody's looking at our atmosphere with enough precision, they could see the chlorofluorocarbons in our atmosphere and know somebody's there who's messing with chemistry in a way that only an intelligent species could do. And somebody. James Webb isn't quite allowing us to see planets like that yet, sure. but that, that information is there mm -hmm. uh, if we can just increase the resolution enough. Mm -hmm. wow. Well, and. It's looking so far, right? So deep into space, so far back in time, and, and just like across the distance. Are, are they uh, looking to point it at things that are closer to it as it's passing by? Yes. In yeah. fact, one of the other pictures that's come out since the first release was a picture of Jupiter. Okay. In the infrared. Mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. when I saw the picture, like, ah, it's not, it's not even as cool a picture as visible light Jupiter. Right. Like from Voyager or something like that. But... I'm sure there's a lot of science there that I'm just not aware of. That sure. Of why someone might want to look in infrared at the planets instead of visible at the planets. Mm -hmm. So speaking of science, you talked about at the end of the star as it the little sparkle in the middle, and then that's just all the dust kind of forming around it. So it, when they say it literally dust to dust, so a nebula starts with dust and hydrogen gas, right? A lot of the dust is hydrogen. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. It starts that way and it ends that way. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Mm -hmm. It's a circle of life. <laughs> Solar yes, life. Yes. Uh, and, and I saw in, in one of the photos you were talking about toward the end where you were able to see, I think it was the mid-range infrared you were mm -hmm. talking about. So were the, was that a binary star? Is that what those two were together? Yes. Yeah, okay. two stars. They're affected by each other's gravity. So okay. they're kind of circling each other. Mm -hmm. But I, d I don't know that the actual star that's in the process of dying was ever imaged before mm -hmm. because... 
of you the dust it because that's covering it up. Right. We needed that specific range of light to be able to actually see the star mm-hmm. itself. It's fascinating. Wow. It is fascinating. It's beautiful. It's so yep. I find it very um, interesting that we had you on, and this was not planned. But Don, do you know what today is? Nineteen sixty nine. Oh, is it the moon landing It day? is. Today oh, is wow. the moon landing. Yeah. So um, July 20th commemorates the day the man walked on the moon for the first of the, yeah, walked on the moon for the first time, 1969. NASA reported the moon landing as being the single greatest technology achievement of all time. And do you know what president actually made this National Moon Day? I do not. Richard Nixon. Okay. In 71. Mm-hmm. Yes. So who were the three people that were in? Well, first of all, what was the name of the um, rocket? Was it a rocket, Don? There must have been a rocket involved. <laughs> <laughs> for the landing. Yeah, yeah I mean, they got to get up there somehow. It was a zip line it wasn't and a, bus. a balloon. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. the bus. Apollo? What was the name of it? Apollo. Apollo, Apollo what? 11. 11. Nine. Carried how many humans? Three. Three. What not, were two. <laughs> not two. Not <laughs> two. I tricked y'all today. <laughs> what were their names? Um... Neil Armstrong, Buzz mm-hmm. Aldrin, and the, the guy pilot that stayed on the ship. Yep, the pilot. He stayed I on know. the ship. His name was Michael Collins. Mm. Do you know how many pounds of uh, astronaut debris that Armstrong collected? Two. No. <laughs> Forty-seven and a half pounds. Wow. And that took it back home. And where is it now? In a museum somewhere? It probably spread out in museums. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that. Makes me think of something with the telescope and observatory because mm-hmm. that was such a scientific feat for us mm-hmm. to be able to do that, right? And televised. Obviously, right. But that required three people to be on the ship flipping the switches. And of course, plenty of people on the ground crew that are helping them out as well. But three people who physically had to be in there and they had to control all those variables. But my understanding of what happened with the James Webb telescope is this, this is something that's been going on for 20 some years. Mm-hmm. And when it launched, there were 237 some things that had to happen just right with the mirrors opening up and it turning around and getting on the trajectory that it needed to. All those things needed to happen kind of on their own based on the, all the, the computations they had done beforehand mm-hmm. or the whole thing was going to be a waste of time and just yeah. like be lost. Wow. There was an incredible amount of tension in the, those months in between when it launched before it was ready to start collecting data mm-hmm. because there, there are multiple sun shields that had to expand Mm -hmm. and like the 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 shields themselves are the size of a tennis court yes Mm -hmm. but they had to fit in a space that could be launched uh, with a rocket Mm -hmm. Um, so it kind of folded up like a transformer Mm -hmm. and then as it's flying through space it's got all those have to expand and the mirror itself kind of folds and opens up Mm -hmm. um, to collect so there were yeah there were dozens of steps of technology that had to all work perfectly yeah. for it to get there and be usable and wow. continue to work that way right like right. The, the the mirror is like multiple mirrors and they all have a little actuator on them that mm-hmm. changes their angle just a little bit so that megan likes to laugh at me when i use my hands when i talk <laughs> i, do a I little have bit no of that. room to talk either <laughs> <laughs> just, i'll just keep my hands underneath the table but i mean it's yeah it's it's fascinating to me it's it really is yeah guess you want to talk about the moon go guess, ahead no guess what was one of the first uh, foods eaten on the moon a hot dog? Hot dog. Yeah, I yeah. believe that. I didn't make it up. <laughs> it was it was just part of my research. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could probably preserve a lot of them up there. Yeah, yeah. I think the rapture could yeah. come and you could still have a hot dog on the moon. Uh, so I do want to say if anybody has any questions about some of the photos that Don has shown or, or how you could see some of those, please uh, post them in the comments. And yeah. So, Don, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but... I do uh, hear great often, start. <laughs> but I do hear, not that I believe it, but I think it's interesting that, you know, folks that were not alive during 69 see the video, the televised, uh, the televised um, newscast of the moon landing, and they believe it was done in a studio. Or scientifically, can you look at that and say, no, it's not a studio because of X, Y, and Z? There's a great documentary about uh, Stanley Kubrick and it being rumored that he actually is the person who directed the moon landing. Have really? you seen it? I have not seen yeah. it, and and Are I you don't a know. I, I don't know what you would need to do to prove that that was um, 
not a special effects. Um, I mean, like they even but, admitted that they like stretched the the flag out so it looked like it was fully, you know, erect up there. But yeah, there's a wire in the flag. Yeah, I mean, but yes, that was intentional. Not and I just gravity for it. Yeah, to, and I just learned to, recently that NASA bought the flag at Sears. But to put it into the rocket to go up with them, but didn't want to because they didn't want to give Sears public um, publicity for free. <laughs> so, but that just came out recently. Wow, yeah. hmm. that's kind of cool. Anyway. Yeah, I would imagine by now NASA is making their own flags. Yeah. They've probably got a whole flag department, I, right? I guess for, I mean, for specific needs in space. I right? guess so. But anyway, that was my little two cents worth about the moon. Yeah. Uh, it's funny you say that. Like people who weren't watching it live and they think it was in the studio. I mean, me, nobody at this table was born yet. I don't I, know about Don. I was. You yeah. were. Okay. I wasn't. I was Fairly. not. I was, <laughs> so I was born in 75, six years earlier, right? And it always seemed like something that happened so long before I was born, just because mm-hmm. it was in black and white. And it just mm-hmm. seemed like by, by the time I'm old enough to understand it, like right. you've got sci-fi and like that just seemed exactly. had to yeah. have occur- occurred like yep. Wright Brothers time period, not <laughs> not six years before I was born. You know what I mean, though? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It was just amazing how far we've come. It is. Mm-hmm. It is amazing. Don, do you have a favorite of the images that have come out so far? Oh, I'm assuming it was one of the ones you had up there or no? The spectrum. The second image. Where really? Where you just see the spectrum of the water. Yeah. That one, to me, is the has the most potential for yeah interesting science so not not because of the visuals but because of the potential discoveries and yeah what's right. to come what's the, yep. yeah, from that information and what's to come yeah. yeah there was one of them i don't know if you showed it on this one but i saw in the news and it looked like the iris of an eyeball like it was it was i think the pictures are beautiful but i think this particular one it looked like the, the an eyeball mm-hmm. which i thought was kind of cool are. yeah and it's cool that they're using infrared as well right because in the past we've only been able to see kind of what was really there in, yeah. in the spectrum that we can see. And so and they're it, able to like punch through a lot of gas clouds they couldn't see before yeah. and see galaxies they couldn't see. Infrared's particularly necessary to look further back in time mm-hmm. because you know, light that's been traveling for billions of years is being stretched along with the universe's expansion. Mm-hmm. So if the light starts out in maybe the visible region, by the time it reaches us several billion years later, it's actually stretched out to longer wavelength ah. and might be infrared. Our eyes wouldn't so, be able to see it at all. So we can see more of the early universe with the infrared uh, spectrum than with a visible light telescope like Hubble. That's just, I cannot, like you said, it's I cannot get re- yeah. yeah, you're talking years and you're talking like I, billions. I just can't wrap my brain around well, it. What's also fascinating is like once you start unpacking that, it's like, okay, we can see that because we have been able to figure out infrared technology, right? Mm-hmm. But that is a more recent technology, and there may be mm-hmm. another technology that allows us to see waves of light that we yep. have not Years been able ago. to find yet and be able to see even further back. Right. Uh, gravitational waves just in the last 10 mm-hmm. years, we've been able to build something with enough precision to detect gravitational waves. Oh, wow. That's cool. Maybe there's more out there besides that. Yeah. So, Don, that's amazing. With a lot of areas um, of science and, you know, other general areas, we're always trying to get children excited and involved in. Mm -hmm. Um, Absolutely. You know, the, of course, Toy Story, they came out with the Buzz Lightyear, which was named after Buzz Aldridge. Mm -hmm. And um, he has a brand new one coming out. Do you think things like these little movies and characters gets kids excited about the sciences because we want of course in education we want them to come to you and continue to be excited and maybe become an ambassador what do you think's the best way i guess no i agree with that completely i know what when i was a kid it was chemistry sets and Mm -hmm. dinosaurs that uh, fascinated me um and eventually i don't know i i guess there's a part of me that says uh, something like uh, making slime, which is something I do at summer camp. Mm-hmm. I, that's not science. Yeah, you're not asking a question. You're not actually evaluating the experiment. That's you're doing a craft. You're not really doing a, a science experiment. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the kind of thing that can kind of draw your interest into mm-hmm. maybe learning more about science. Yeah, chemical reaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So on that note, in Havelock campus right now, we have 45. Um, youngsters running around doing Mm -hmm. the engineering camp and they're in day three Um, it's been so far it's been very successful it's very high energy it's kind of fun to see Mm -hmm. a bunch of young kids running around so our stem building is being used very well so 
um, for those that have maybe missed this opportunity and they're looking forward to it for next year, certainly um, you can call our Havelock campus and we can get you hooked up with that. So. Well, also, Don has a camp that yeah. he's doing next Tell week. Tell us about yeah, that, Don. You've got a camp coming up. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, have, I do. Uh, <laughs> it's called Mad Scientist Camp. Uh, I'm running it for uh, third through fifth graders this cool. year, and it starts next week. Is it full? It is full. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's, same it's thing. It's a little lower enrollment this year because we were still a little worried about keeping restrictions down. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is full. But it, it, as far as I know, we'll probably want to offer it again next summer. Fantastic. And they're coming to play VR. They are. Yeah. yeah. So they're going to get to come experience science uh, virtually. So chemistry yeah. labs, and they can see the northern lights if that's what we want to do. So it's going to be cool. Very cool. Yeah. So, Don, were you the kid that when you talked about um, chemistry sets and stuff, did you go to Radio Shack and get really excited? Like to, uh, I, I was maybe maybe a little too old for to have gone to Radio Shack. I don't really? Know. Well, I don't really? know. I uh, got excited about Radio Shack. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure like there not. was a Radio Shack around when I was there... a kid. So it could have been the, the region I was. Oh, well, could it could have been the region? Or, right? Yeah, because yeah, I can remember that being a big deal. You know, like under the Christmas tree, mm-hmm. that was the big Santa thing. Yeah. Like some of my favorite Christmas presents. Build your own radio, radio Shack. and yeah, yeah that yeah. kind of fun stuff. Mm-hmm. Or coding. Morse coding. Mm-hmm. Kind of. Did you like that? Uh, what did you say? Do you know? <laughs> Morse code. Do not translate. Okay. <laughs> Is that alien talk or Morse code? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> space talk. Yeah. So, well, uh, yeah. That, they also heard some some uh, sounds coming out of space too, right? Chatter. Yes. Uh, <laughs> a bit of chatter. A bit of chatter. Yeah. I gave a talk last Friday on the web first images, and mm-hmm. someone in the audience said they had read an article mm-hmm. about an alien message and yeah I, I, I didn't see that I can you seen run it backwards message, and no. hear it yeah. <laughs> I, I have still have yet to some see kind of that, a radio signal is what that, it was yeah. um i have yet to see news about that so i don't i don't know if that's the case or not it, yeah. it's not uncommon to get a signal mm-hmm. that looks like it has encoded information but Every time so far, it's turned out that that was one of our signals that got bounced off yeah. Makes a sense. satellite or bounced yeah. off the moon or something and was actually coming back to us. So it, it's all it would be the first time we got our signals crossed. <laughs> it, it's all a Radio Shack conspiracy to try and get themselves back into business, and you have to have yeah. a special Radio Shack radio to yes, hear the to <laughs> Uh, so on that noise that Megan just made, that's how I want to close out the show today. Do we have any announcements to make? Other uh, than, well, his, cl- his, his camp's full, camp, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. I don't have anything else specific. Okay. Um, the only thing I would plug is, you know, New Bern Civic Theater. They do have the final run of the kids' show Willy Wonka that's this weekend. Okay. So there are awesome. some, still some <gasps> tickets if you want to go see it. I saw it last weekend. It was a lot of fun. It was great. Speaking of Willy Wonka, what did he have there? Lollipops. He had lollipops. Well, he yes. had a lot of candy, but he yes, he had, he had lollipops. lollipops. Yeah. Sorry. I was going to do right. some pop, pop culture and lollipops, but we don't have time. Okay. Wendy, you, you anything? got anything else for us? Uh, no. How many days are these folks at your library? Um, today and tomorrow. Two. Two. <laughs> Two. Man, and nice. are you speaking to presenting tomorrow? I'm presenting tomorrow uh, about virtual reality in library services well, and the impact that it has on, on students. Best of luck on that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. It'll be I know fun. it's a huge passion of yours, so that'll be yes, exciting. Yes, it'll be fun. Exciting to share. Yeah. Don, anything else? I don't think I have anything else. So. Nope. Just waiting for the next pictures. Well, yes. Although Will you come am, back and present to us? my virtual reality project, too. Oh. We have written a guide for students yes, to use, yes. or for teachers to use virtual reality in laboratory classes. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And we've made modules for it to be embedded in a learning management system. So I'm just waiting for a final meeting with the virtual learning community to, to make sure that it's actually done. When it's completed, would you give us a Reader's Digest version Absolutely. later? Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That'd Very be fantastic. Cool. Love that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't no, it's okay. Don, um, thanks so much for coming yes. on the show today. Really. It was a treat. Amazing Fascinating pictures. stuff. I love yes. it. Yes. Very, very yeah. good. Holly, anything? No? Holly says no. No. Yeah. She says no. It's all quiet in the booth today. Well, it's one o'clock. Yes. And we have wrapped up. We will be, um, God willing, back here next Wednesday at noon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Should yeah. be. Yeah. So, Let's hope so. Everybody. Goodbye. Stay safe. Stay happy. Stay healthy. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye, everybody.